Hi, and uh, welcome to uh, biology in your biology taster session. OK, uh, so for today, what I'm going to do is just to uh, introduce you to um, what biology is and uh, how we will deliver it at Trinity. And then we're going to have a go at a little taster session um, on the heart. Uh, so you'll need um, pen and paper or preferably a pencil and some paper or a pencil, pen and paper because you're going to need to be doing a little bit of drawing. OK. All right, so first of all, you need to think, um, uh, obviously, if you're watching this taster session, then you'll be thinking about uh, taking biology at A-level. So just want to remind you what biology is, because at GCSE, you will have been um, uh, doing all three sciences, and maybe never even thought about what each of those three sciences are. So biology is the scientific study of living organisms and their interactions with the environment. So it's all about studying living things how do they work and how do they interact with each other? OK, all right. And I've just got um, a um, <clears throat> diagram to show you of what we mean by living things that were all made up of cells. There's two different types of cells, our eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells. There's also our viruses, but we don't add those on there because we're not sure whether they're living because they don't respire. All right. So this is the diagram of our COVID virus. And then all right, how our eukaryotic cells are split into plants, animals, protists, fungi. All right, and then we've got our prokaryotic cells, which are our bacterial cells. OK, all right, so um, that's what we're talking about when we're talking about studying biology. All right, why, why would we study it? So if you're interested in a range of different living things, then you might want to be studying biology. All right, but there's different areas that you might be interested in. So you might be interested in uh, sort of more of the ecology side and how organisms interact within an ecosystem. So, for example, how might all the fish on a coral reef interact with the coral, the anemones or what happens when sharks come along? Right. Uh, you might also be interested in the physiology of the human body. How does our body actually work? And if you're thinking of being, say, a physio or a sports scientist or a doctor or a dentist, all right, this particular point uh, would be maybe the most interest to you. You might also be interested in uh, metabolic processes, so all of the reactions that take place, respiration, photosynthesis, our enzymes, digestion, those types of things, all right? Uh, or you might be interested in uh, how species are formed and evolution, so you might be looking more uh, sort of at the historical side of um, uh, organisms. And there's many other things that you might be interested in um, if you're interested in living organisms as a whole. OK, all right. And so um, but these are just a few reasons why you might want to study biology. And these are a few things that we will study um, at a level. The other reason for studying biology is that it's a very exciting science. And over the past 25 years, there's been some major biological breakthroughs. And uh, a lot of the reasons for this is that technology has improved so much that then as scientists, as biologists, we can use that technology to make these breakthroughs. All right. So, for example, um, we have sequenced all of our 46 chromosomes in our body. Uh, so that's the sequence of the DNA. All right. And this has led, led us to identify key areas that code for genetic diseases. And now that we've identified those, we can learn how to uh, try and control them or to treat them. That wouldn't have been made possible if we didn't have these fantastic DNA sequencing machines, which we didn't have 30 years ago. All right. So then the scientists have worked with um, engineers to build robotic limbs that can be controlled by um, thoughts, processes and non nerve cells in our brain. So if you lose a limb, OK, you can have a, a, an arm or a leg put on that you, your thought processes can then control like you would do if it was your normal arm. And then obviously, more recently, over the last year, uh, we've identified COVID-19 and it's led to the rapid development of uh, vaccines. And if you think about it, all right, over the next sort of five, ten years, the studies into viruses, how we control them, how we treat them are going to be major. And that's just one area. OK, that's just one area of it. And so biology is always advancing. There are lots of new things happening all of the time. 
And it's a really exciting uh, science to be um, working in. Okay, so who will be teaching you biology if you come to study at Trinity? Uh, so at the moment, uh, I am Dr. Anning, all right, uh, and there's also Mrs. Land. And um, I have been teaching biology for uh, 15 years, uh, uh, but I, prior to that, I carried out marine research, which is what I got my doctorate in. Um, and um, so I've got a range of different experiences. Mrs. Land is also an experienced biology teacher. And what we want to offer you if you come and uh, study biology, uh, first of all, uh, really engaging lessons, all right, that you're going to be interested in and you enjoy. Um, and that will also cover the curriculum. OK, all right. And with those lessons, you'll be doing a lot of practicals. So we want to help you develop your practical skills so that by the um, end of your two years, we could suggest the practical that you're going to do. And you could just go away and choose your own equipment and almost carry it out yourself. All right. Uh, some of those practical skills will involve field work. Uh, so we want to um, previously have been to Scarborough uh, and we've done some marine field work. We've also done some field work locally in the rivers around us as well. So that would be part of uh, your biology course. Um, and then um, in addition to that, we will give you a lot of support. So if there's a particular topic that you struggle with, uh, we can um, address those areas and give you extra interventions on that. Um, also, if you're going for those higher grades, we can give you um, extra exam questions and uh, extra areas to read for so that you've got that extra layer of knowledge as well. And then what we've started doing uh, is this thing called Cafe Scientifique, uh, where we um, arrange webinars with current scientists. So um, previously we've had someone come in who's been working on COVID and talk about their work uh, as a virologist and how they got into it, along with the, their team of students and postdocs. Um, and we want to continue to do this, OK, uh, so that you can gain interest and insight into um, what the life of the scientist actually is. And then we're also offering you careers advice um, for what you can do with your biology in the future. OK, um, so what will you study? Um, the exam board that we choose is OCR and in the first year, the first thing that you'll, you'll start studying is a, a topic called foundations in biology. So this will teach you all about biological molecules, enzymes, um, proteins, fats, carbohydrates, their structure. Because until a DNA, ATP, until you know about those things, you can't then go and uh, learn about how everything functions because it's all controlled ultimately at the uh, molecular level. Then you're going to learn about the heart and the blood and how things move around the body, not just in humans, but in insects and in fish. All right. And then you'll learn about uh, transport of water and sugars in plants as well. And then finally, the end, end of year one, we start looking more sort of at biodiversity, a little bit of evolution uh, and disease and how it can affect disease can affect these two things. And so over that first year, you'll carry out a series of practical activities, some of which are called required practicals, which is the same as what you've got at GCSE, and not the same practicals, obviously, um, and, and additional practicals to support uh, the content that you're learning. OK, and then in year two, you might think, well, there's only two bullet points. Are we going to do less work? You won't be doing less work. These are just slightly longer modules. All right, so when you come back into your year 13, we'll be looking at um, nerves, we'll be looking at um, homeostasis, so how your body controls its internal environment. And then we'll be looking at the links between photosynthesis and respiration. And that's this energy part here. And then for your final bit, you'll be looking at genetics. OK, all right, and uh, linked with evolution. You'll also be looking at, I haven't typed this in, um, DNA technology. And then we'll be looking at big ecosystems, you know, climate change, uh, biodiversity in more detail and um, things that affect them. All right. So that gives you an overview of what you will cover in your two years. And this is enough uh, information 
to take you through uh, to uh, a degree in uh, biological type uh, uh, um, study. All right, and I just typed in the, this list is is uh, longer than this, but this this these are certain things that you can do once you've um, done your biology A level, and if you went on to to uh, an apprenticeship or to higher education. So it's just the obvious ones are a doctor and a dentist and a vet and a nurse, a paramedic, a physio, all the healthcare sides of things. All right. Um, but you could also be something like a nature conservation officer. You could be a forensic scientist. Um, you could work at, uh, as a lab technician. You could be a teacher, um, marine biologist, microbiologist. You know, there are many, many uh, possible careers if you take biology A level. So it opens um, up a lot of doors for you. Okay, all right, so that's introduced you to biology at Trinity. So what I thought we'd do now is a little uh, taster lesson um, based around the heart, all right? Now you should have some background information about the heart that you will have done at GCSE. But at A-level, we have to look at it in more detail. OK, all right. And so what we're going to look at is uh, the heart in a little bit more detail and um, images of a heart dissection. And then you're going to get to, uh, to have a go at clawing it because that's one of the skills that you have to be able to do. OK. So what I want you to do is to um, get your pause the video, get a pen and paper out and I want you to label A to G, okay? A, well, no, I want you to label all of the things that are on here, if you can. You might not be able to remember all of them, but label as many as you can. So pause the video now and write down all of the letters and write down the parts of the heart uh, that they equate to. Okay, so um, how did you do? So you should have put uh, that A is the vena cava, okay? All right, and then this takes blood into the right atria, which is B, and then it flows down into the right ventricle, which is C, all right? And this is all deoxygenated now, so now it's got to go to the lungs. So it goes up our pulmonary artery to the lungs. Remember, this is the only artery that carries um, deoxygenated blood. And then E, all right, is the pulmonary vein. So blood comes back from the lungs, all right, and then we'll go into the left atria. And then it will move down into the left ventricle. Uh, uh, this should say, sorry, so G should say the left ventricle, all right. And then finally, it gets pumped up into the aorta, uh, and goes to all of our body. And the final structure here is I, is your tricuspid valve, all right? And the valves control the blood backflow between the atria and the ventricle. Okay, all right. Now, um, here's a, a slightly more um, in-depth diagram which shows the flow of blood through the heart, all right? And I want you to think, what can you remember about this? What can you remember about the flow of blood? And these questions you would get asked at the start of your heart lessons at A level. So what I want you to do again is to pause the video and see if you can answer these six questions. Okay, how did you do? What could you remember? So why is the right side of the heart blue? All right, the answer is because it contains deoxygenated blood. That will have been blood that's come back from the body, from your cells that have been respiring and used up that oxygen. All right? And um, it says, where does blood come from when it enters the vena cava? So that's from your body. That's what we've just said here. Where does pulmonary artery take the blood to and why? So it takes the blood to the lungs to pick up oxygen. OK, all right. So here's our pulmonary artery here. This diagram slightly different way round to the first one. Go into the lungs to pick up more oxygen. 
Number three, which chamber does blood go into first after his, it has come back from the lungs? All right, so it's going to be this chamber of the heart here. It's the left atria. Where does blood go to from the aorta? All right, so this is aorta. It's red now, so it's picked up oxygen. So it comes down from the lungs to the left atria, to the left ventricle. The heart contracts, all right, and then it's pushed up through the aorta and it goes to the body. All right, so it carries oxygen to those respiring cells. And then the last question, the function of the valves, all right? The valves are to prevent backflow of blood into the chambers. So if you imagine blood has just come back from the pulmonary artery from the lungs and it goes into the left atria. This bicuspid valve here opens and the blood flows through into the left ventricle. All right, when the left ventricle is full of blood, those bicuspid valves shut and then no more blood can come through. And then that means when the heart squeezes, all of the blood in the left ventricle will go up to the aorta. So they're really important, the valves, really important. OK, so that's a bit of a recap on blood flow through the heart and what different parts of the heart and blood vessels do. OK, now, at A level, you would see a diagram that looks a little bit like this. Right, so it's the same as the one you've just labelled, but in a little bit more detail. And uh, the reason this is in a little bit more detail, it, it's got a better representation of how the heart looks if you cut it open, right? And when you do your heart dissection, you're going to need to be able to recognise these structures. So that's why at A level, you get a diagram that's in more detail. Now, one thing that's extra that you need to know are these areas that are circled in red. OK, all right. So if we have a look here, you, you've covered already these two areas, these two red circles here, which are your tricuspid and your bicuspid valves. And these valves separate the atria and the ventricles. OK, and um, so they will separate the flow. They're like the doors between the atria and the ventricle chambers. But there's another set of valves that you need to know about at A level called the semilunar valves. And they are found here, all right? Uh, they actually go between the left ventricle and up to the aorta, all right? And between the pulmonary arteries and veins. Semilunar means half lunar, like a half moon. So they're like a sickle, shape, sickle cell moon shape. And they do the same job as the other valves, all right? They stop the blood flowing back into the heart and they make sure that the blood goes out through these blood vessels. OK, and when you um, and then this other circle here is, um, shows the very thick muscular wall on the left side of the heart, much thicker than the right side here, look. And it's because it's this side of the heart that does the final pumping of the blood up through the aorta, okay? So it needs to be very thick and muscular. So the blood is in the left ventricle and it needs to, the, the muscle wall needs to contract with a lot of energy to force the blood up through the aorta and to the body. All right, so when you come to A level, you'll need to be able to label your heart in this much detail. One other thing I'm just gonna point out you only thought of, of that the blood left the aorta to go to the body. What happens is, is the aorta branches into these three other blood vessels called the carotid arteries. All right. And one will go up to your brain. All right. And others will go towards your shoulders as well. So they go to the upper part of your body, carrying oxygenated blood. OK. All right. So that's that's the detail that we're going to need at A level. So the next bit, how do we carry out a heart dissection? Um, now, if you're a little bit squeamish um, and you don't want to, you don't like looking at this, all right, uh, that's fine, um, but just try and hang in there, okay? When you come to do your, these lessons, you, it's optional as to whether you do the dissection, because uh, I know that it makes some people feel a bit ill, but you will need to be able to recognise parts of the heart from an actual photograph of it. So 
let's just say we are doing the dissection and my students have just done this recently. So you get your heart, all right? And first of all, you would have to identify the left and the right hand side of it before you do any cutting. And the question here says, which side is the thickest and why? All right? And just by looking at it, and you'll be able to feel this as well, the left side of the heart has got the thickest muscle tissue, all right? And that's because the blood uh, goes to the left ventricle before it's pumped up through the aorta. So it needs to be the strongest. That's why it's the thickest. So there's another question here. There are two types of tissue that you can see. What are they? All right, so there's our left side of the heart that's thickest. The two types of tissue, what do you think they are? Pause the video and think about it for the moment. All right, and the two types of tissue are cardiac muscle, which is in dark red, and it's protected by some fatty tissue, which is the creamy white area. Okay. And then there's one last question. What does the septum do? So the septum is this section down here. All right, it's a layer of muscle and here it's covered also by some fat that separates the left and the right side of the heart. Right? We don't want deoxygenated and oxygenated blood mixing. When this left ventricle contracts, we want all of the blood in here to be oxygenated. So the septum is a layer of muscle that separates both sides of the heart. So first of all, you'd have your heart in your hand and you'd identify these areas. OK, that would be step one. Step two, okay, all right, you then have to put the um, heart uh, on its end and identify the blood vessels coming from the top of the heart. And what will have happened is these blood vessels are tubes and they will have been cut by the butcher. Uh, and this is the bit that a lot of students like because you get some spare pens or um, proddy seekers and you stick them into the blood vessels and you can feel where they go and you can work out, therefore, what the blood vessels are. So as you can see here that have been labelled, this one is the pulmonary vein on the left side of the heart. This will bring um, oxygenated blood back from the lungs. All right. This is your uh, vena cava. So this will bring deoxygenated bl blood into the um, right side of the heart. OK, and then we've got the aorta here and the pulmonary artery. All right. So then you've done that and then, all right, you have to cut open the heart. So this step is more tricky, okay, because if you cut it a little bit wrong, you will cut some of your key features and you won't be able to actually see them and then draw them. And the valves are the hardest bit to see and to find. All right, so this heart has been cut down the middle. So you've got the septum here. And we've cut into the left side. So if you imagine, if you if you took both your hands and closed this up together, all right, we would have cut down this section here. This is the bit that's been cut. Okay, so here's our septum. Here's the left side and here's the right side. What can we see? So first of all, this is our right ventricle. This is our right atria. Now, they are obviously chambers within the heart. So when the heart is actually together, that would be like a, uh, a chamber within it, but we've cut into it now, so it just looks like this open gap here. And the left ventricle would be a chamber as well, but again, we've cut through the walls of that to open it. Okay, now here is one of our valves, it's this little red blobby bit here. Okay, all right. On the other side, the bicuspid valve we can't see, it would be up in this section here, it's either been cut or we just can't visualize it. But what we can see, these white section here, these are our tendons or tendinous cords, and they help, they help hold uh, the atria and the ventricles in the right place. And then we've got a little bit of fatty tissue around the outside, and this, we can just see the pulmonary vein here that we haven't cut. Okay, all right. So this is a nice, uh, nicely cut um, heart showing us most of the key features. 
Right, now, once you've cut open your heart, what you've got to be able to do is make a very detailed biological drawing of your dissected heart, right? And this is one of your required practicals. And to be able to pass this, because this will get marked, there are certain rules that you have to follow. You have to use a sharp pencil. You can't use any sketchy lines. It's not like an art lesson. You're not allowed to shade any areas of your diagram. So, for example, you might want to shade your right, right ventricle down here because it's a bit darker. Don't do that. All right, just draw it as at this little shape here, but with no shading. Then you label your diagram with straight lines. So if you were drawing a line to the right ventricle, just be straight. There'd be no arrowheads on it, right? You won't pass if you don't use a ruler. You have to add a scale to your diagram to show roughly how big um, your drawing is in comparison to the real object. And you only draw what you see. Okay, don't try and make things up or add things that aren't there, even though that you know that they might be there, uh, uh, but you, you just can't see them at the moment. So now what I want you to do is to pause the video and have a go at drawing the heart in this picture. OK, how did you do? All right, so I've made a drawing of the heart. Um, uh, of a drawing I know would pass as a biological uh, diagram, all right? So what I want you to notice is that I've labelled all of the areas, I've only drawn what I can see, I've done my um, lines for the ruler, and I've put no arrowheads on them, and there's no shading whatsoever. However, there's one thing that is missing from my drawing, all right? I've forgotten to put on a scale bar. And this that it would show the real size of the image. So what I what I should have done is to draw a line like this to say this represents five centimeters. So actually, I know now that one, two, three, four, I've got about five of those lines that would go up the length of the heart, right? Which would be about 25 centimeters in height. And I know that that would be the real height of the actual heart that I've drawn. So how did you get on? All right. So what I just thought I'd do is I'd put my diagram next to the diagram of the dissected heart uh, just to show um, roughly how I've done it. So I've got this fatty tissue here on the outside and up here. I've drawn my tenderness cords, which are the same as here. I've just drawn this circle to, rep well not circle, this shape to represent the right ventricle. And the left ventricle down here, I've put a little bit, uh, a few lines in to show it, okay? and I've labeled the septum and the cardiac muscle on this side. And then also for this little red blob here, all right, that's, the, that's my tricuspid valve one that I've added in. All right, so you can think, oh, how did I do? Would I have passed my biological drawing? Okay, all right. And this has just now given you an introduction as to uh, what we might do as uh, part of uh, a heart lesson at A level. Now, in addition to that lesson, what we then uh, encourage students to do is to read scientific articles and watch videos and documentaries based around biological um, knowledge that they've been taught in the lesson, okay, to try and sort of in, improve your literacy and your interest in the topic. And what we did is when the students had done that heart dissection, uh, we set the piece of homework or independent study to go and watch this particular BBC programme. And it was all about heart operations and the ethics behind them. So it was a fantastic um, open heart surgery that was shown. And then students had to come back and discuss their views about the reasons for carrying out the operations and reasons why the operation might not have been carried out. So what you can now do is go away and watch this video if you've been interested in this lesson and see if you can formulate your own views on the two operations. This is what you would have to be also doing at A-levels, coming up with your own thoughts. OK, so that's the end of our taster session. All right, so thank you for joining in. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we hope to see you in our biology lessons. Um, one thing I didn't say is that biology, um, although you 
think it is easy. It's not the easiest of the sciences. The concepts are relatively straightforward, right? But you have to apply them to difficult scenarios. We hope you enjoy your lessons, but I don't want you to come into biology thinking it's the easiest of the sciences, all right? It's just as challenging as physics and chemistry. But what, when you come to our lessons, what we hope is that you will enjoy them, they're engaging, that you'll go away at the end of two years uh, thinking that you can go and learn a lot about the topic independently. And but also over the two years that you have been given the support that you're needed. All right, so thank you again, and uh, I look forward to seeing you in the future.